What's going on guys? It's your boy Decoder, and welcome back to another episode of Know Your Rulings. As always, don't forget to leave your ruling questions in the comment section of this video. However, this time I'm going to ask you guys to do something a little bit more specific. We've recently reached 25,000 subscribers on the channel. <laughs> And I decided that the next Know Your Rulings video would be something a little bit different. I want to go over specifically Dragoon of Red Eyes rulings. So if you guys have questions that have to do with Dragoon of Red Eyes, leave those in the comment section of this video so that next week I can make a Dragoon of Red Eyes rulings special episode. So if you have any rulings that have to do with that, leave those in the comment section of this video and I'll go over those for the rulings of my next video. But without further ado, guys, let's get right into it okay so this first only question comes to us from two Omis, and they ask hi coder i was wondering what's the difference between a quick effect and a during either player's turn effect so in practice there's actually no difference between a quick effect and a during either player's turn effect basically the way cards were written prior to just a couple years ago i think they made the change like a year or two ago i'm not too sure but before having the cards being written as in parentheses quick effect in their text they were written as during either player's turn they basically just change that to put less text on the actual cards so if you see a card that says quick effect or a card that says during either player's turn they effectively mean the exact same thing they just simply change the text that they use on the cards all right this next only question comes to us from alucard and they ask if only if i only have ancient warriors double dragon lords on my field and my opponent activates shadal fusion can i chain double dragon lords effect sending itself as cost to bounce back the shadal fusion and what would happen Happen afterwards so in this case if the only card your opponent controls is the Shadal fusion that is being activated you are not legally allowed to activate the effect of double dragon lords because the Shadal fusion that's being activated is already marked to be sent to the graveyard after it resolves so a normal spell normal trap quick play spell any sort of spell or trap card that is already activated is marked to be sent to the graveyard unless it has an effect that says that it would remain on the field so something like swords of revealing light for example if it is already already marked to be sent to the graveyard after the chain resolves, it is not a legal target for any effect that would return it back to the hand or return it back to the deck. So if they activate the Shadal Fusion and have no other cards on your field, you're not legally allowed to activate the Double Dragon Lords. Now say for example they activate the Shadal Fusion and have another card that you can legally return to the hand with the Double Dragon Lords. If you activate the effect of Double Dragon Lords sending itself to the graveyard in order to return whatever other card they have that you could return to the hand, when the Shadal Fusion would resolve is the moment at which it checks if the opponent has a monster special summon from the extra deck. If you no longer have a monster that was special summoned from the extra deck when the Shadal Fusion resolves, the Shadal Fusion is forced to fusion summon with materials from the hand and field. If they do not have a legal fusion summon that they can perform with their hand or their field, the Shadal Fusion simply goes to the graveyard without resolving its effect effectively. However, if they do have uh, the legal materials in hand or on field to make any of the fusion monsters in their extra deck, they are obligated to resolve the Shadal Fusion and send the materials they have from hand or field to the graveyard in order to perform a fusion summon. So this next ruling question comes to us from Leo Cannon Yates, and they ask, Hey Coder, if my opponent activates Totally Awesome to negate a spell or trap card, can I chain Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion? If not, can I chain it if Toad is attempting to negate a monster? So, the effect of Toad, if your opponent activates a spell, trap card, or monster effect, you can negate the activation, destroy the card, and then if you destroyed it, you can set that card to your field. In the case where your opponent activates a monster effect, you are always allowed to chain the, toad, the Totally Awesome to that monster effect, and then if you chain Totally Awesome to a monster effect, you are always allowed to chain Ghost Bell in order to negate that Toad, because the game does recognize that after the toad destroys the card, it is marked to be sent to the graveyard, and then the toad would set that monster from the graveyard to your field. Now, when you have a card effect like this that sets a monster directly onto the field, that is considered as a special summon. So, totally awesome setting your opponent's monster from the grave to your field is treated as a special summon, which is the reason why you can always ghost bell if totally awesome does negate a monster effect. However, with spells and traps, it works a little bit differently. With with spells and traps, you are not allowed to chain Ghost Bell to Toad in one exception, however. You are allowed to chain the Totally Awesome to the activation of a Pendulum Scale, and if you do, your opponent is allowed to negate the Totally Awesome with the Ghost Bell for the simple reason that a Pendulum Scale, if negated by Toad, 
does go to the graveyard and is then at that point treated as a monster that will be special summoned to the field face down. So in this case, if Toad is being chained to the activation of a Pendulum Scale, you are allowed to negate the Toad with the Ghost Bell. All right, this next only question is a doozy. It comes to us from Ryza and they ask, could you go over chain blocking if you haven't already? So this is another one of those Yu-Gi-Oh jargon things that is basically the way that players will describe a certain interaction and it's the term known as chain blocking. What players mean when they refer to chain blocking is they're talking about when you have multiple trigger effects that go on chain at the same time and you basically place them as chain links 1, 2, and 3 and so on in a certain way so as to not let your opponent respond to an effect that you do not want to get negated. The biggest example that you'd see with something like this is something like uh, Tour Guide and Kagemusha Knight interacting with each other. So Tour Guide says on summon, if it's normal summon, you can special summon level 3 fiend monster from your deck. And Kagamusha Knight says if you normal summon level 3 monster, you can special summon itself from your hand. Both of these effects are a trigger effect that meet their trigger at the exact same time. This is what is known as SEGOC, S-E-G-O-C, which stands for simultaneous effects go on chain. What this means is that because the Kagemusha Knight and the Tour Guide meet their activation requirement at the same time, you can basically, as the turn player, construct your chain links in any order that you like. What this means is you can make Tour Guide chain link 1, Kagemusha Knight chain link 2, and this is what players refer to as chain blocking the Tour Guide of the Underworld. The reason why they refer to this as a chain block is because something like Ash Blossom and Joy Spring can only respond to the last effect on the chain. But if you normal summon Tour Guide and wish to activate this effect and also use the effect of Kagemusha Knight, your Tour Guide can be chain link 1 and your Kagemusha Knight chain link 2 before your opponent is allowed to respond with Ash Blossom on your Tour Guide. But because the Kagemusha Knight is now chain link 2 and, it, and the last card placed on the chain is not the Tour Guide, your opponent is not allowed to respond with Ash Blossom to your tour guide from the underworld so that's the reason why players refer to this as a chain block it's because you're blocking the chain to some extent to not allow your opponent to respond to an effect of yours that you would like to have not responded to so this is what players mean when they talk about chain blocking you can do this with any trigger effects that meet their activation requirement at the same time it would effectively all go on the same chain so do be mindful of this when you have multiple trigger effects that activate at the same time you can place them on the chain in any order that you like so as to not allow your opponent to respond to certain effects in your chain. So this next ruling question comes to us from Falco Eagle and they ask if I player A summon format skipper and activate its effect to reveal a link monster from my extra deck and I reveal trap trick Sarah can I then link that same format skipper off to summon a trap trick Sarah because trap trick Sarah requires one non-link trap trick monster and in this scenario format skipper's name would be treated as a trap trick Sarah but would it technically be treated as a link monster or not so in the case of format skipper format skipper can reveal a link monster in your extra deck and when you perform a link summon using the format skipper that format skipper can copy that revealed monsters name type and attribute in this case the format skipper does not treat itself as a link monster when you link summon so you are allowed to link summon a trap trick Sarah by revealing another trap trick Sarah from the extra deck with the format skipper because the format skipper can treat itself as being named trap trick Sarah which does fulfill the requirements for the link summon of another trap trick Sarah yet it itself is not treated as a link monster which is also in line with what you need to link summon a trap trick Sarah so yes if you reveal a trap trick Sarah from your extra deck with format skipper you are allowed to then link that exact same format skipper for the link summon of the link one trap trick Sarah from your extra deck. So for this last ruling question, it comes to us from Zacchaeus and they ask, I have a set boo boo game and trap trick. I activate trap trick to banish and set another trap card from my deck. My opponent then uses feather duster to destroy both trap cards. After which I use boo boo games effect to set two traps from my graveyard. Does the activation of boo boo games effect in the graveyard here count towards the trap tricks one additional trap activation limit? So after you have resolved the effect of trap trick you are only allowed to activate one trap card for the rest of this turn now 
activating a trap card and activating a trap card's effect are not the same thing. In this case, you are activating the effect of Boo Boo Game in the graveyard. However, that is not considered activating a trap card. What a card means when it says activating a trap card as opposed to activating a trap card's effect, activating a trap card specifically means flipping the card face up onto the field. So in this case, because you have not activated a trap card, you've only activated a trap card's effect, you are still allowed to activate one trap card during this turn because the activation of the effect in the graveyard of Boo Boo Game does not count towards the limitation of only one trap card for the rest of this turn that the trap trick applies to you. So anyways, guys, that's it for this episode of Know Your Rulings. Thank you so much for all the comments that you guys leave in the comment section of this video. And once again, thank you guys infinitely for 25 thousand subscribers that is an absurd number that i never thought i'd reach and it just makes me so happy that i can bring you guys this this ruling knowledge this policy document knowledge all this knowledge about this side of Yu-Gi-Oh that not everyone really knows or not everyone is really knowledgeable about it makes me really happy that i can bring you guys this knowledge and make you guys more knowledgeable about the game so chat thank you so much for everything that you guys do thank you so much for all the watchers all the viewers all the subscribers and all that good stuff and i will see you guys in the next video have a good one guys Peace.